So folks, old Donnie just took a surprising election loss and Democrats everywhere are celebrating as they scored a surprise emergency election win that no one saw coming, a vote no one saw coming. And it's connected directly, guys, to Donald Trump's attacks on the real President Biden absolutely backfiring, leading to this defeat and critically leading to a collapse in his own fundraising and a major spike in the fundraising around Biden as everything fails, as they try to go at Biden and his family and the American people, in many cases, people that don't even love Joe Biden, respect Joe Biden and understand that he's being treated unfairly and are responding with their votes and with their wallets. And this comes at a time where Donald Trump trying to shift the legal blame over to the Biden family got rocked in a pretty bad way and is having a complete meltdown. Watch these clips, which shows Democrats winning big and then Trump losing even bigger. And then I'll show you a shocking meltdown by Trump. Guys, it's disturbing, but hilarious. Hit the like and subscribe button and we'll get right to that. Biden campaign says Wednesday's impeachment inquiry vote was a big boost for campaign fundraising. An email from Vice President Kamala Harris pitched donors for support, writing that Republicans are, quote, going to throw everything they have at Joe because they know they can't run against our record. And by the way, they don't have a record to run on. And if you don't believe me, just ask Chip Roy, who screamed in an empty chamber. We've done nothing. We've done nothing, he said of the House Republicans. The Biden campaign called the email the best performing fundraising pitch of the cycle for the vice president. Let's bring in the editor of the New Republic, Michael Tomaska. He's writing about this now. He joins us with this new piece. This impeachment will do more to reelect Biden than anything Biden could do himself. And Michael, I yeah. could tell him that. I could tell him that. We, here, here we impeached Bill Clinton back in the 1990s and yeah. uh, his approval rating spiked into the 60s. Impeachment always backfires, and it backfires especially when these House Republicans don't even know why they're impeaching him. There's no evidence. I mean, let's stipulate that maybe they're sitting on something that they haven't told us about yet, okay? Just to say that and get that out of the way. But, Joe, there's no evidence. We've been watching them for nearly a year now since they've had control of the House. House of Representatives try to hold these hearings, Comer and Jordan. It, it's it's been like a Marx Brothers movie. The, the, their own witnesses uh, contradicting their their claims and so on and so forth. So uh, you know it's it's been ridiculous so far. And yeah, I'm not surprised at that spike in fundraising. Uh, and this is why I argue that it's going to help Biden. And I'm not the only one. A lot of people are saying this. It will energize the base in a lot of ways uh, that isn't very energized right now, obviously. And number two. Who do we say all the time this election is going to come down to? Fewer than 100,000 swing voters in six or seven states. Uh, if they end up shooting blanks on this the way most of us suspect they will, are those swing voters going to be persuaded? They're just going to think that they wasted all this money and all this time. And meanwhile, a Congress that has only uh, enacted 12 bills into law and has done nothing, this is their priority. Uh, it's it's uh, it's Christmas for Biden. Yeah. Hey, Michael, I have a I have a question for you. But first, I wanted to say one short thing about the previous discussion, which I listened to with with great interest. And that is Eddie yeah. said we have forgotten how to disagree. We have forgotten to have a conversation about things in which we disagree. And that's often true in Washington. But I have to say the discussion that Eddie and Joe had was an example of the reverse. This is issues, an issue about which they both feel strongly. It's complicated. It's inflammatory. And you managed to have a discussion about it, which each side got their say and maybe had a little bit of an effect on the perspective of the other. So putting that aside, Michael, to go to your to go to your piece, do you think the House Republicans inevitably will approve articles of impeachment when this inquiry is over? Not clear, Susan. A good question. Um, 
As I point out in the piece, there are 17 Republicans in the House. There used to be 18, but Mr. Santos is gone. There are 17 Republicans in the House of Representatives who represent districts where Joe Biden beat Donald Trump. Uh, many of those handily, not by two or three points, by 12 or 13 points. They did vote for this vote the other day to begin the proceeding. But will they vote articles through? That's that's a really good question. Uh, you know, and if that if they don't even do that, if Speaker Johnson can't get that done, then boy, uh, that's really embarrassing for the Republicans. And here comes another motion to vacate, probably. Michael Sharpton here. When <laughs> yeah. when you look at the energizing of the base voters that uh, uh, President Biden needs. Do you feel that not only the fact that they're trying to impeach him, uh, but the fact that they seem to uh, be painting with a broad brush uh, his son's indictment implying or in, in some cases outright saying that Biden was involved? Do you see? I, I remember we saw this when they went after Bill Clinton and it really drove a lot of people to Bill Clinton's side that they felt the unfairness was there. Are you seeing this kind of possible current? If the Democrats and those that will be supporting Democrats use this in a way to go to the base and talk about this, it's not just going to happen on its own. Yeah, they do have to use it. They do have to exploit it and talk about it and make a big deal of it. Uh, you know, we'll, we have to see how it, how it plays out, Al. I mean, as Susan's question suggested, they might not even advance articles and, and, and send them over to the Senate. But if they do and there's a Senate trial and it drags out uh, into next fall and Joe Biden is acquitted handily, as he certainly will be, in the Senate, I can't picture. I mean, it's just impossible that there would be 67 votes to remove him from office. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think it. Uh, I, I think it could. The timing of it could just could be just great for the Biden campaign. The voters don't seem to be picking up on that. Yeah, Andrew, you make a couple of good points in that question. Let me get to the first, which is specifically the president's reaction to that impeachment inquiry. The White House posting a statement from President Biden late yesterday where he described this as a baseless political stunt. We'll put it up there that you can read along and said and he wrote, instead of doing anything to help make Americans lives better, they, the Republicans, are focused on attacking me with lies instead of doing their job on the urgent work that needs to be done. They are choosing to waste time on this, again, baseless political stunt that even Republicans in Congress admit is not supported by facts. The president being very critical of those Republicans right now, saying instead of focusing on issues like Ukraine, Israel and border security, he said Republicans in Congress won't act to help, repeating that multiple times in his statement. And the White House, having spoken to aides to the president earlier today, they are warning about the potential for this to have a real impact on the economy going forward. The economy, as you noted, that is seeing some real strong signs right now with the potential for a government shutdown increasing as the days pass early January, obviously, is going to be do or die time as it relates to the potential for a shutdown. Just yesterday on the economy, we saw the stock market get to an all time high, a record high. And it reminds you of something that Donald Trump posted back in 2019 on then Twitter, now X. He wrote the following. He said, you mean the stock market is at hit an all time record high today and they're actually talking about impeachment? Well, in fact, that is the case this time around as it relates to President Biden. The stock market is in an all time high. Donald Trump himself said the stock market would plummet under Joe Biden if he became president. It's at an all time high. And House Republicans are talking about impeachment right now. As it relates to the economy, there are those strong signs right now, some new indicators. The consumer sentiment is getting more optimistic. But again, Andrea, to be clear, the White House does face some real challenges on this issue to try to better convince Americans that Joe Biden deserves credit for the economy the way it is right now. Still Americans in many parts of the country frustrated by rent being high and the price of food still being too high. But obviously, as we heard from the Fed just yesterday, inflation going in the right direction and likely to be as many as three more cuts, according to Chairman Powell, next year. And David Jolly, with all that good economic news, uh, what do you make of the party's vote yesterday? They had no agreement on other priorities like Ukraine, the border or Israel. And they launched this impeachment inquiry. They've been investigating for a year and they have not come up with anything. No direct links. That's right. And Donald Trump's Department of Justice had four years to investigate this and could not uncover anything. No charges were brought by the Department of Justice or U.S. attorneys. But House Republicans believe that they have evidence that the world has not seen. 
Andrea, I do believe this has been scripted since January. Republicans have plotted this out. And I do think they will move towards impeachment next spring for the specific reason that if you've now voted to open up the impeachment inquiry, even if you're one of those 18 Republicans or so from Biden districts, to not impeach Joe Biden now would be seen as an exoneration by Republicans. And though that is probably the right outcome based on the facts, politically, I think Republicans will ultimately move to impeach the president. And so the question then becomes, what is the White House response? Thus far, we have seen them very dismissive, rightfully so, of the substance of the investigation. But I'm not sure a dismissive posture is actually the right approach at this point, because what Republicans are doing really is so foolhardy. I think you've got to take an aggressive posture and crush Republicans' narrative from now till next November to embarrass them for what they're doing on behalf of the institution. Shortly after Donald Trump's 2020 loss, later describing key moments that led to the fake electors scheme, which resulted in criminal cases against many people, including Donald Trump. CNN's Marshall Cohen is here with the exclusive reporting. So, Marshall, we're talking about Kenneth Chesbro, the uh, Wisconsin attorney. What happened in his interview with prosecutors and in the Oval Office? Well, he told prosecutors about what he called a photo op gone wrong in the Oval Office in December 2020. Go back to that hectic time. At that moment, Trump's team in Wisconsin had just lost their election challenge. And the lawyers who led that case were in D.C. for a meet and greet with their client. Before they walked into the Oval Office, they were told, do not give him false hope. Do not indulge the conspiracies about the election. Some of them listened. Some of them didn't. Here is a clip from Ken Chesbrough describing what the lead attorney in Wisconsin, Jim Troopas, told Donald Trump. It's clear that um, Troopas personally told the president there was zero hope for Wisconsin. As part of this message, I, I think, crafted to try to get him to concede or just you know, give up this, this, this long shot challenge. So there was a, there was a conscious effort to um, deflect him from a sense of any possibility that he could pull out the election. Zero hope. That's what he said. So, uh, look, some people around Trump told him that he couldn't win and he went on and tried to overturn the election anyway. That's a huge part of special counsel Jack Smith's criminal case. That indictment is filled to the brim with examples of Trump being told by advisors and lawyers that he lost. This Oval Office meeting was not in the indictment, so it builds on the existing case, the existing evidence against Trump. And you also say that another part of the audio, audio reveals something that could possibly help Donald Trump's defense. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's when Chesbrough started talking in the meeting uh, with Donald Trump. Uh, again, remember, he was told, don't give Trump any hope. Once the conversation moved to Arizona, he did just that. Take a listen. So I, I ended up explaining that Arizona was still hypothetically possible because the alternate electors had voted. And I explained the whole logic. Because the alternate electors had voted, we had more time to win the litigation. So it was, I think, clear in a way that maybe it hadn't been before that we had till January 6th to, to win. So he brought up January 6th, brought up the fake electors. He told Trump that there was still a viable path to keep contesting the election. This was immediately met with fallout. Reince Priebus, who helped arrange the meeting because of his Wisconsin connections and the former his White RNC House. former chairman and the former White House chief of staff. Exactly. Yeah. He helped arrange the meeting. He was in the room. He was livid. Listen to Chesbro describing Priebus's reaction. Right after the meeting, um, Troopas... Well, Troopas said that 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 Wright's Priebus was extremely concerned with what I told the president about Arizona and about the real deadline being January 6th, and um, that he was going to do damage control. Reince was going to follow up, and I, 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 I mean, I, I it was trying to mitigate whatever optimism I guess I created. So some people told Trump he lost. Some people told Trump he could keep fighting. We all know which path he chose, uh, which, of course, ended with the insurrection here in Washington. Yeah, also ended up with Kenneth Chesbrough getting indicted. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Trump. And, and Donald Trump. Uh, Marsh Cohen, excellent reporting. Thank you so much. So you can see that. They're trying to attack Biden. They've had, they have nothing. And unlike the Trump excuse, because I have it up on the screen here where he's been complaining that 
you know, they they've they have had they had three years to to investigate him. The reality is with with Trump stuff, guys, with Trump stuff, they haven't had three years, really. He stopped being president, but a lot of the things he's being investigated for happened after he was president or in the very, very, very final days of him being president, right? On J6 and in the run up to it or the documents that he took. And that played out in the months after he left office. The Bragg stuff is different, to be fair. That case is different. That deals with 2016 stuff. But the three major criminal cases are all really about the last days of Trump being in power. And you don't charge someone because it would be wrong to charge anybody. And yes, especially a former president, you might say, if you feel presidents are special, that just with, without a, a thorough investigation. So the investigation did start in many ways two and a half years ago in some cases, but it took time. With the Biden stuff, they actually did have many years. All of the real allegations, if they're real at all, I doubt they are, go back to Biden's time as vice president, which is as many as like 12 years ago, right? Like 14 years ago. You know, a lot of the allegations go back a real long time. They did have time to investigate Hunter, and it's clear they're doing it now for political purposes, and Republicans are pushing it for political purposes. But you see, Biden's fundraising is spiking, and Trump's support is dwindling and that's a major loss and democrats are scoring big big wins all the way to the bank